Alright, YouTube. This is like my third take on it again. I mean, you know, third time's a charm. Uh, today we're, I'm going to be showing you how to access a computer remotely using a Windows command shell. Uh, pretty easy peasy. I uh, tried to do this on a virtual box. It did not work. And so I'm using it on a standalone USB. First thing you're going to need is a uh, one USB to dual boot if you're doing it that way. But if you already have Kali Linux installed in your hard drive, then you don't need to do this part. I'm um, using persistent USB storage, live system forensic mode. Now this is for the Kali that we're going to be using. This one is the uh, USB that we're going to be putting the payload and the vulnerability in. So let's get started. Uh, before I continue though, uh, the computer that you're going to be seeing the display for is the uh, computer, the target computer that we're going to be hacking into. Uh, this is for uh, so that everyone can see uh, the effects of it very clearly. I tried to do this um, on the computer that you're seeing that I'm getting into, and uh, it didn't really work. There were some complications in recording and stuff, and I really just want to make it easier. So you plug in the USB, and for most Windows operating systems, uh, you have to hold the F2 key, and then power it on, and you have to continue to hold the F2 key until it, com it completely boots up. Uh, you'll be greeted with a boot menu, so hold on for that, wait for it, shoot, it's not working, eh, alright, hold on, yeah, um, sometimes it doesn't work, so what you have to do is you have to uh, go to power up here, hold down power, hold shift, and then shut down. So continue to hold shift, the shift key, as you are powering down your computer. And once this computer completely shuts down, the lights should come down. Then hold F2, F2, and then the, turn on the power. So now, just continue to hold F2, don't let go of it, continue, holding it down, press it, oh, this is a different one, ah, damn it, uh, this is a different model of computer, so, yeah, I think, yeah, I was doing a different version of it, right, uh, that's not at all what you have to do, that's for other Windows PCs, um, Okay, so restart it, and then as it's turning back on, continue to press the F8 key. My bad. Um, if you already have Kali on it, press F12, and you'll get this. Now uh, all I have to do is UFI boot. I want to boot into this USB right here, so I'll boot into it. Boop. All right. Sorry for that, just have to check on it. Okay, so now that we have Kali on, we're going to pick Live System Forensic Mode. And it should boot. Uh, this will take a, a little bit of a while, it's uh, setting up the kernel. Uh, as long as you see everything has an OK, then uh, you're, you'll be uh, good to go. At this point, uh, make sure that you do have a 16 gig USB, and uh, just uh, make sure you can use it, you know. Alright, let's take a minute. As soon as the mouse thing comes on, then uh, you're pretty pretty good, pretty good. Um, load this baby up, and boom, we got a Kali desktop. Alright, so now at this point, put in your USB, the USB that uh, you're going to use for your payload. Plug that thing in. Uh, if your USB has a flash, then it'll flash for a few seconds and get accommodated. Open files, and open 16 gigs. Uh, this is Kali Live Fold, this is the USB I'm booting from, so uh, you don't need to worry about this right now. Only worry about your USB that you've put in. Uh, uh, the USB that you're using to dual boot should say Kali Live, and uh, the one that you're using right here is uh, 16 gigabyte volume. Uh, this right here is the payload.exe. Um, this is from a video I was doing before, though uh, you don't really need to worry about that. So let me just try to move this to trash. Shit. Um, 
God damn. I think I'm going to have to use a mouse. So, uh... Sorry for that. Alright. Uh, let me just make sure. Sorry for that little bit of awkwardness. Um, yeah. It's just hard. I, I really hate trackpads on laptops. I really prefer this. So if I move this to the trash, uh, we can start a new payload. So, uh, now, this part of the tutorial, uh, sorry, yeah, for this part of the tutorial, just move a little bit to the side here. Alright, this part of the tutorial, open, uh, you're going to need to open one uh, open terminal, one that you haven't used yet. Then go to, down to 13, Social Engineering Tools, and click on Set. Very important. The first time you boot up, it should give you this thing. Uh, just type yes. Uh, just a reminder, this video is for educational purposes only. Uh, now, press 1 for social engineering attacks. Now, uh, press 3 for infectious media generator. And uh, 2 for standard metasploit executable. Uh, these are standard exploits, um, pretty basic file format exploits and other stuff. You know, uh, we'll do that later. So now, now what we need to do is select what vulnerability we want to put into our target computer, which is this little display baby right here. Now, uh, the basic ones that I would recommend for right now is one, though you can try out the other ones, like for example, Major Predator allows you to access the webcam and VNC allows you to look at the other person's um, uh, desktop without them knowing. But uh, for now, uh, we're just going to do pretty basic uh, number one. So let's go. Now for the IP address for the payload listener, this is when the other shell comes in handy. Uh, type in ifconfig. And yes. Now go to your uh, WLAN. Uh, Alright, well, I have to log into a Wi Fi. So I'm just going to log into a network. BRB. Okay. Uh, there is a Wi Fi tool that you can use, like for example, Wi Fi. If you don't want to do that, you can scan this and start cracking Wi Fi passwords, though. Uh, we're not here to do that right now. It's not our thing. So I have config. And should load up in a minute. Yeah, because you have to log in again. Yeah, every time you start Wi-Fi, uh, it changes your um, WLAN settings. And then you have to connect the whole thing again. So, yeah, all right. Now we're in. Sorry for that delay. So I have config, and this will be our IP address, 192.168.1.14. So 192.168.1.14. Uh, Note, this is a private IP address, so um, might not... Uh, shit. Uh, I messed it up. I had to... Um, I was trying to press um, backspace and uh, control Z to do everything again, but... Uh, I'm just setting it back up again. Um, so, 192.168.1.14. And port, uh, I recommend using port 80, though if port 80 doesn't work after you do this vulnerability, I suggest using uh, uh, port 443. So, generating the payload. Uh, this will take uh, a second. Alright, so now we have the payload, but uh, what are you going to do? We have to put this into a USB and then inject it to our sender. Uh, now you can also send this via email if you want that too, uh, but for right now we're just going to copy it to a USB and put it into the display, uh, our target computer. So uh, you can clear this for a you know neat thing. And then we have to open up the .set directory, uh, ls to see the files, 
and we see payload.exe. So we have to copy payload.exe to the desktop. This way, uh, set the directory root and capital D S T I L P. And now it's copied to the desktop. And we can just put this thing down there. Payload.exe is right here. God damn it. And here we go. Payload.exe and 60 gigabyte volume. Now, what we can do is we can send this right here and we can put it to the RUSB. In my case, it's the 16 gigabyte volume. Now, uh, my USB should start flashing, so should yours. Uh, go into files, uh, you can also copy it from there, make sure payload.exe is downloaded right there. Uh, let's rename it, you can rename it anything really. Um, I suggest uh, instead of uh, payload.exe you can put in um, uh, something funny like, uh, you know, creditscore.com, I mean, or creditkarma.exe, right? So we can enter that. Now creditkarma.exe is our executable, our vulnerability. So now all we have to do is right click this and eject our USB. And yeah, push and empty the trash and wait for your gig to start flashing. And there we go, our USB is has stopped flashing. Now uh, in this instance, my, my USB is uh, uh, attached to my keychain. So I'm gonna have to uh, remove it, you might say, uh, from the keychain for a minute. Probably should have done this before the video, but you know, I gotta do it now then. Alright. Oh, uh, damn it. Now it's stuck to this thing. Okay. There we go. And Uh, at this point, uh, alright, so we have our USB with our payload on it. Ooh, scary. Okay, now all you have to do is plug this thing into your target computer, the person, the computer that you're trying to get into, put that into a USB port, hear that little button button. Alright, and now uh, it should open the file folder automatically. It's usually what a payload.exe does. There we go. And we can see Credit Karma right there. So, very important, on your Kali session, uh, open up the, uh, you, you, need, you can delete this now, uh, you, uh, full screen the set terminal, and say, when it says create a list earner now, type in yes, and it, what it'll do right now is it'll launch the Metasploit framework. Alright, so it should run now, and alright, so it starts, everything is okay, make sure you don't have any errors, it's also pretty important, and right now we're waiting for our target to access the full, the file. So, if you can see right here on uh, the computer I'm accessing right now, uh, I'm going to click on Credit Karma, watch as it connects to the uh, Kali computer. So you can see right here. There we go. We opened a command cell shut session. Uh, I'll close down this file explorer, leave it open. And we now have access to the computer. So in order to check which computers we have owned, we can check sessions. And you can see session 1 is the shell 86 windows. And this will allow us to get access to the CMD command prompt window remotely. All we have to do is type in uh, sessions 1 and Boom, we're in. Though right now we're inside the USB, uh, so if we want access to the um, to the main hard drive, all we have to do is put in C, and boom, we're in. Uh, something cool you can do is that you can copy the payload to the hard drive so that even if the person finds the USB, takes it out, deletes it from their hard from the USB, and you know like gets you in trouble or anything, you can still access it through the hard drive because you copied the payload to uh, another folder in the hard drive. So right now we're in the hard drive. You can press dir, give us access to all the files on here, and you can see we have program files and program files times 86. 
So uh, pay attention to the uh, display right here. I'm going to be accessing it. I'm going to be turning on a, a program. Uh, try not to press Control C in this window because you know, you'll lose the, the terminal and then you'll have to put in another payload. Um, try to uh, keep this all through the mouse key. So uh, I want to open the program directory. So I uh, will put a paste and let's open all their program files. So I open that. Durr. And look at all of these amazing programs. All right. So I want to open. Uh, let's see. I want to open Team Viewer, or whatever. All right. So I want to open Team Viewer. Okay. So CD. Uh, Team Viewer. I can open Durr again. And look at all that. Wow. All right. So. Now, what I can do is I can find teamviewer.exe, and uh, I'm not going to be touching anything on the target computer. Uh, pay attention to the mouse where it is. I am not touching anything. I am manipulating it through the Kali installation. So I can open that, paste that there, and right now, uh, oh, not, not that, uh, not CD, just um, regular teamviewer.exe, and it should start running now uh, in a few seconds. So, oh, there you go. Team Viewer just opened.